This is my gaming PC, and right now it has the AMD Ryzen 7800X 3D and the NVIDIA RTX 4090. But for today's video, that's actually not the important part. The important part is the Corsair IQ H150i Elite Capellix XT Liquid CPU Cooler. Wow, that's a mouthful, but basically it's a 360 AIO by Corsair. And the reason why it's important is because it's cooling my 7800X 3D, but today we're switching it out for this guy right here. This is Deepcool's Mystique 360 AIO. It is their fifth gen liquid cooler with an LCD display, and they're promoting the fact that it now has brand new anti-leak technology. Okay, here's what you can expect from today's video. First of all, Deepcool did send this out to me for review, but this is not a sponsored video. I did not receive any money to talk about this product, so you can expect an unbiased and honest opinion from me. Secondly, I will tell you up front, I'm very excited to get my hands on this because I do like AIOs and I do like AIOs with LCD displays and I've been waiting a very long time for Deepcool to finally get on the LCD display train so I'm very excited to see what this thing can do. But with that being said, I won't let my excitement blind me. If it's a bad product, I will tell you it's a bad product. And now finally, let me set the expectation for what I plan to do for testing purposes. This will not be an all-encompassing AIO video where I take the Mystique 360 AIO and compare it to 10 or 12 other AIOs and make a bunch of graphs for you. That's not what I'm doing today. So if that's what you're expecting, I can point you to another creator who has already done that. Rather, what I'm doing is I'm looking at this from the standpoint of a PC gamer. Hey, I'm a PC gamer and I've decided that I want to upgrade my CPU cooler for whatever reason. So I'm gonna drive down to Micro Center. I'm gonna hop on Newegg.com and I'm gonna order the brand new Deepcool Mystique 360 AIO. And when it comes in, I will switch out my CPU cooler. That is the perspective that I'm approaching this from. So what does that mean? Well, that means I will share with you what comes in the box. I will share with you what the install experience is like, but this will not be a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do that, so it should not be viewed that way. And then I will share with you what my temperature differences are in a couple of situations. Those situations are as follows. Idle temperatures, sitting on the desktop, what is your base temperature just sitting there on the desktop doing nothing and then Cinebench R23 what happens after you run it a few times you allow for heat soak in what is your maximum temperature recorded and then gaming I will pick one game that I legitimately play that I can control the testing environment and share what those results are and that game for today's test will be Call of Duty Cold War number one I legitimately play this game it is not just a benchmarking title and number two this game has a 24-7 dedicated playlist to Nuketown, so that means I can guarantee a like-for-like -like testing scenario between the two AIOs. And this is not just a standard built-in benchmark for a game that nobody really cares about, but this is a real match that real gamers are experiencing on a daily basis as plenty of people are still playing Call of Duty Cold War. I will also talk about the software differences between what Corsair offers with IQ versus what Deepcool is offering with their brand new software solution. And of course, at the end of the video, we will talk about my final pros and cons of the AIO. With all of that out the way, let's get out the old AIO and let's install the brand new Deepcool Mystique 360 and let me share my experience with you. Okay, so what do you get in the box? Well, you obviously get the AIO. All three fans are pre-installed and daisy chained together in a very clean fashion. I have to say I do appreciate this because this is now less work for me to do on the installation process. And not to mention it's very clean, but the fans are non-RGB. The thermal paste has also been pre-applied for you. Outside of that, you get two manuals regarding the product and you get all the mounting hardware for AMD and Intel CPUs. As for the installation experience, it's fairly straightforward. Deepcool has a dedicated video on their YouTube channel showing you exactly how to install this AIO for both Intel and AMD systems. But I'll tell you right now, if you've ever installed an AIO, it's basically all the same stuff. You have to pick out your mounting hardware and attach it to the AIO and the mother board. You have a USB header that needs to connect to the motherboard USB header. You have one connector for your CPU fan header. Then you have another connector for your AIO pump header on your motherboard. After that, just install the Deepcool software. And from there, you will be able to modify the screen on the AIO. The fans on the AIO are not controlled by the Deepcool software. Rather, they are controlled by the fan header on your motherboard. So in my case, I have an Asus motherboard. So if I want to modify the fan speed of those fans, I do need to use Armory Crate. But 
but your experience will be different based on the motherboard manufacturer you are using. Lastly, don't forget to peel off the plastic from the LCD display, and I will have a link down below in the video description to the video tutorial on how to install this AIO. And now before we talk about temperature differences, there are a few things to note. First of all, my ambient room temperature is 73 degrees Fahrenheit or 22.78 degrees Celsius. Secondly, I do have Curve Optimizer enabled for the 7800X 3D, and I do have a negative 30 all core offset in place. And finally, when we show off the Call of Duty Cold War temperature differences, please understand too that I do have OBS running in the background, and so this does add extra workload to the entire system. So the frame rate will be marginally lower than what you would see if you were not running OBS in the background, and the temperatures may be marginally higher than what you would see if you were not running OBS in the background. However, the test will still be fair because both AIOs did have OBS recording in the background while playing Call of Duty Cold War. Next up, for the Corsair AIO specifically, I am not using thermal paste. Rather, I am using a Thermal Grizzly cryo sheet. Next up, I have switched out the Corsair fans for the Lee & Lee Uni SL Infinity fans. Now, for the Deep Cool AIO, I am using everything that came in the box. So I will be using the pre-applied thermal paste and I will be using the pre-installed fans. Now that will just be the initial testing. And then after that, I will switch out the deep cool fans for the Lee and Lee fans to give it more of an apples to apples comparison. Plus that's really how I'm going to be using it in my main system anyway. Okay, now let's talk about the temperature differences. So starting off with the idle temperatures using the Corsair H150i Elite Capellix XT AIO, I am currently showing you a screenshot that I took from Hardware Info. And I wanna point out the core temperature here was 29.5 degrees Celsius. And if you look at the column where it says maximum temperature, it says 53.8 C. Now, if you go up a few lines, you can see where it says CPU T die. And according to hardware info, this is the hottest part on the CPU itself. So the current temperature at the time of the screenshot was 48.5 degrees Celsius. And the maximum temperature recorded was 61.1 degrees Celsius. And now if we switch over to the deep cool AIO, we can see the core temperature is 29.1 degrees Celsius. And the maximum temperature is 52.3 degrees Celsius. And for the CPU T die, we can see that the current temperature at the time of the screenshot was 48.3 degrees Celsius and the maximum temperature recorded was 56.8 degrees Celsius. Okay, next up is Cinebench R23. Starting off with the Corsair AIO, you can see that for the CPU T die, our maximum achieved was 85.3 degrees Celsius. And for the core temperature, you can see that the maximum temperature achieved was 81.6 degrees Celsius. Next up are the deep cool results for Cinebench R23. If you look at the CPU T die, you can see that the maximum temperature achieved was 83.9 degrees Celsius. Celsius. And if you look at the core temperature, you can see that the maximum temperature achieved was 87.7 degrees Celsius. And for those of you who may be interested, here are the final scores achieved by both AIOs. The Corsair AIO, despite running a little bit hotter, actually came out a little bit ahead. But I would make the argument that all of these scores and temperatures are within margin of error. Next up is Call of Duty Cold War. And as you can see here, our 7800X3D is sitting around 67C. You will notice a spike in temperature here pretty soon. Soon. The more activity we have, the more gunfire that you see take place, we do start to peak up a little bit in temperature, but it does come right back down. And for the most part, it does hover around 67 to 68 C. And that's not bad given the fact that this is native 4K with everything fully maxed out. And so that's a pretty good respectable temperature. But now the question is, how well can the Deep Cool AIO perform under the exact same circumstances? Next up is the Deep Cool AIO. Again, Call of Duty Cold War, again on Nuketown. This this is even the exact same game type, Team Deathmatch. And as you can see, we're sitting at 68C, and a lot of times we hover down to 67C, we peak around 6970C. Basically, it is the exact same performance as the Corsair AIO. Even though there are fan differences and thermal paste versus a cryo sheet, you can see it is the exact same thermal performance here, regardless of the AIOs. Now, before we talk about software and pros and cons and final thoughts and all of that, that I did switch out the deep cool fans on the deep cool AIO and I did put the Lee and Lee uni SL infinity fans on there and I reran all the same test and basically the results are eh, more or less the same I mean yeah they're different but 
here, check them out. Okay, now let's take a look at the Cinebench R23 results one more time. The maximum temperature achieved with the Corsair AIO with the Lian Li Uni fans was 85.3 degrees Celsius, and that is on line item CPU T die. Now, when we compare that same line item with the Deep Cool Mystique 360 AIO with the Lian Li Uni fans, our maximum temperature is 85.4 degrees Celsius. So on that one line item, they are basically the same temperature. However, the line item below that is actually noticeably higher. The CPU CPU die average for the Deep Cool Mystique 360 AIO with the Uni fans is now 85.5 degrees Celsius, whereas the Corsair was only 82.3 degrees Celsius. And the core temperature is also higher because you have 81.6 degrees Celsius on the Corsair AIO versus 85.6 degrees Celsius on the Deep Cool Mystique 360 AIO with the Lee and Lee Uni fans. So, yes, it does seem like the results are worse by adding the Lee and Lee Uni fans. However, if you look at the final benchmark score, you can see that the the Deep Cool Mystique 360 AIO with the Lian Li Uni fans is noticeably higher than the Corsair test and the original Deep Cool test by a wide margin. Now, look, I don't know how much stock you want to put into the final results or whatever, but I do think that the system noticed, hey, we have a little bit more headroom here, so let's push it. And because it was able to push it, it was able to score a little bit higher. But I'm going to be honest, that's just the guess. I don't play the Cinebench game, I play video games. So now let's switch back over to Call of Duty Cold War. And as you can see with Call of Duty Cold War, we are once again at that same 68C. Same AIO, Deep Cool Mystique 360. The only difference is now we have the Lian Lee Uni fans on there. And as you can see, while there are some differences whenever you put a CPU under a 100% stress test in actual video games, the difference isn't that great. Yes, we just peaked up to about 71C there. That is also something we saw with the other two tests as well. But now we are right Right back down to 69C, 68C in that general area. So as you can see here, regardless of the combination of hardware, the overall thermal performance, especially in gaming, is about the same. Okay, that's enough temperature testing. Let's talk about the software side of things and what Deep Cool is trying to offer. And let's talk about the pros and cons of the AIO as a whole. And I'll share some final thoughts and we'll get out of here. Okay, essentially, Deep Cool has their own software now that gives you a lot of information about your system you can see your cpu information you can see your gpu information you can see the temperature you can see the package power you can see the clock speeds you can see your ram frequency some storage information and even some network information now it's no secret that i think the main selling point of this aio is the lcd display and because of that you can modify the screen and you can change it around if you want to see your cpu frequency you can do that if you want to see the time you can do that if you want to put a custom gif on there you you can do that as well. And for the RGB, there is no customization. You can just set it to automatically work with your motherboard software, or you can turn it to this temperature warning RGB option, which frankly, I don't really find too useful. So I just set mine to match up with my motherboard. And lastly, probably the coolest feature about the software and about this AIO is the fact that it does offer a rotating display. And this applies to both the hardware as well as the software itself. You can physically turn the AIO and it will automatically adjust for you to make the display look proper, or you can do it yourself within the software by simply hitting the option that says rotating screen. This is truly phenomenal and I will give props to that. Okay, pros and cons time, and this is gonna be rapid fire. Number one, the software, honestly, it's it's broken, okay? It's not feature complete and it's quite buggy. Here's my experience. First of all, why can I not change the RGB inside of the software? The software is obviously meant to work with this AIO, but I can't change the little bit of RGB that the AIO has within the software. Now, I can manipulate the screen all day long, but that little bitty strip of RGB on the AIO, you're telling me that I have to use my motherboard software in order to change that? That doesn't make sense to me. And it seems so unnecessary. And if I had a system set up to where I was using motherboard software for anything else, I would now have to go download that software just to change that one little strip definitely seems unnecessary. But there are bigger problems than that. The other problem is the fact that I can't even use the latest version of the software. That's right, the latest version of the software at the time of recording is 1.1.14. It doesn't work for me. It gives me the error message that you are seeing right now. I have uninstalled it, reinstalled it multiple times. I have rebooted my PC. I have disconnected the AIO and replugged it. No matter what I do, I cannot get this version of the software to work. However, if I 
use the previous version of the software, 1.1.13, it works totally fine and there are no issues. Now, this is very unfortunate because if you look at the patch notes for 1.1.14, you will see that Deepcool added a lot of new features and quality of life changes, things that I would have loved to test for myself, but unfortunately, time goes on, I have to make the video, I need to get it done, so this is where we are. Unfortunately, that version of the software does not work for me, and the version that I do have, I would say, is less than feature complete. Additionally, it's worth pointing out that if you look at Task Manager, there are times when the Deepcool software will utilize up to 6% of your CPU utilization, whereas something like IQ typically for me is around two to three percent tops and IQ is something that is much more feature complete. Now, outside of that though, there are some upsides here. The AIO is by far and large the most beautiful AIO I have ever used, tested, owned, etc. all the things. In fact, I would even call it one of the most beautiful AIOs, if not the most beautiful on the market today. Looks are subjective and you may think differently, but I will tell you that I think this AIO is absolutely gorgeous. The screen is big, beautiful, bright, vibrant, colorful, all the things. It is honestly just a really good looking screen. And I love the fact that they didn't just do a standard all black color scheme here. They went with more of like a gunmetal gray, if you will. And I love that because it stands out, but yet it is still clean and minimalistic and it blends in very well with any existing black PC build. But needless to say, this AIO, in my opinion, looks absolutely phenomenal and it is by far the most beautiful AIO I have ever used. And I will stand by that that'll probably be the title of this video. Okay, now one more thing on the negative side of things. Well, it's a negative to me is that Deepcool decided to max out the RPM on this AIO at around 3000 RPM, give or take. And the problem with that is they did not allow for you to change it. You cannot change the RPM. Now, the reason why I bring it up as a negative is because this AIO is a little bit more noisy than other AIOs I've tested. This is unfortunately by far the most noisy AIO. Now, with that being said, it's not like you can't tolerate it or get used to it. And in fact, if you're a PC gamer that uses a headset, you're not gonna hear it at all whatsoever. But if you're somebody who really prefers a quiet system where you hear little to nothing, then unfortunately this AIO will stand out. And I don't know if it's possible for Deepcool to do a software update that will allow you to change the RPM speed. But if that is possible, then Deepcool, I would recommend that you do that because why not? Corsair allows their users to do it with an IQ link software with all of their AIOs. Okay, here are my final thoughts. First of all, I should have mentioned this sooner and I'm sorry that I didn't, but the price of the AIO is only $179. I'll probably go back and add a note earlier in the video so people can see that sooner, but $179 is a phenomenal value proposition for this AIO because you're getting not a 240, not a 280, but a 360 millimeter radiator. And in addition to that, you are also getting a fully customizable LCD display. If you have been in the AIO market at all over the last few years, then you should be aware at how expensive LCD displays are. For example, if you look at the Corsair AIO that I used in this video, the H150 Elite Capellix XT, that AIO alone doesn't even come with an LCD display and it retails for $220. And I did purchase the add-on kit for the LCD display and that was another $100. And so now we're at $320 for that package. And in addition to that, Corsair forces you to use their proprietary hardware with controllers and extra extra cables and honestly it's just a mess. But the Deep Cool Mystique 360 is a fraction of the cost and you don't have any proprietary controllers or anything like that. Everything plugs directly into your motherboard as long as you keep the fans on the AIO that came with the AIO. And I gotta say, hey, I tip my hat to Deepcool for that because I've been wanting something like this for a very long time. I have never understood why, if I want an AIO with a fully customizable LCD display, why do I have to pay close to $300 for it? That's the way it's been for the last several years. There have been AIOs with LCD 
LCD displays that are static, where it just gives you a temperature readout or something like that. But to get a fully customizable LCD display, yes, yeah, typically been closer to the $300 range if you want a 360 millimeter AIO. And so with all that being said, I think what Deepcool has here is truly a phenomenal value proposition. And in terms of the temperature readouts, I mean, look at it for yourself. Everything was in just a few degrees of each other. And so you're talking a $179 360 AIO going up against a $220 360 AIO from Corsair that doesn't even have an LCD display at that price point. And the temperature differences there were just a few degrees off. And technically with the stock fans on the Mystique 360, Deep Cool's AIO actually pulled ahead in most cases. And so with all that being said, I mean, the thermal performance is right where it needs to be. The looks are phenomenal and the price is incredible. So yeah, I definitely recommend it. Is it a little rough around the edges? Sure, absolutely it is. But I contacted Deepcool and I said, hey, please tell me you're working on the software. And they said, hey, we're definitely working on it. And that's why they have the change log. You can see the older versions. You can see what they've added and what they've changed with each iteration. So they are making an effort. The software is a little bit rough right now, but I do think in the long run, it'll be a really, really great experience. And so I do recommend this AIO. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of the AIO because Deepcool is going to read the comments. And so let them know what you're looking forward to so that they can take your feedback and make the changes accordingly. Hey, if you like this video, do me a favor, hit that like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. If you're new, get subscribed, check out the Patreon, join the Discord for only $1. And until next time, E-Rock out.